Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. When you come to Washington DC you obviously realize that you're in the seat of power. And all of these buildings, all of these federal buildings are used. They're, they're the instruments by which the victors in any ideological war, that means an election, use to impose their views on a nation and that nation's culture. Whoever wins elections wins the spoils of that war. So the old phrase, elections have consequences, rings very true. And it's time now to be brutally honest and simply admit that conservatives have lost this battle. The secularists got hold of some necessary institutions and slowly, over the years, over decades, bred a couple of generations who then voted these secular-minded people into these very halls of power. Conservatives in Washington have a great resemblance to the last holdouts at the Alamo. How did this happen? How did America go from 200 plus years of moral and political conservatism to the secular liberal state we see today? Five reasons have been identified by scholars and historians. Number one, conservatives were much, much more concerned with economics and foreign policy than they were morality. The morality was a given. The Cold War was raging with the Soviet Union. Political conservatives were much more comfortable and able to talk in those terms, foreign policy and economics, than they were in theology, philosophy, and history. We see this still even today in the split in the GOP, the Republican Party, between social conservatives and economic conservatives. Number two, the entertainment media grabbed the youth back in the 1970s and have never let go. While parents were blithely unaware of things like MTV and the wild assortment of subversive messages being sent to their children, their children were being intellectually and spiritually kidnapped. By the time many parents realized what was going on, it was too late. Number three, the courts. More than any other single institution, the courts is where the secularists and liberals have been able to pound the nail in the coffin. It took decades, but once education and entertainment were sufficiently corrupted, it was inevitable that a new generation of voters would start casting their votes without any concern about basic moral issues. And the liberal secularists have done their jobs of securing those votes by appealing to emotions and passions. Those voters then in turn are responsible for lawmakers who then in turn put people on the courts. Number four, the innate conservative quality of obedience and almost automatic accepting of authority. By definition, conservatives are not rebels. They don't rebel. So when, for example, when the Supreme Court said in the late 1960s that prayer in school is unconstitutional, even though a majority of Americans at the time identified themselves as conservative, they simply accepted it. Even though every single poll taken at the time revealed huge majorities disagreed with the court in that ruling. And number five, the last reason why, and perhaps the most important, is that the one single institution that at the time had the moral authority to challenge the secularist liberal juggernaut did not do it. The Christian faithful, and in this group we include Catholics and Protestants. The decades of dissent that have been allowed to go on unchecked in the Catholic Church in America, coupled with the widespread abandoning of practically everything Christian by huge swaths of Protestant Americans, has been the single biggest reason why we now stand where we stand as a nation today. The near total abolition of duty in the face of contraception of the contraceptive mentality by nearly all Protestant denominations and the near total silence and under the radar rejection of the church's teaching among its Catholic uh, adherents and faithful and their leaders has set the stage for the moral collapse which would, be an, which would inevitably lead to the dissolution of the family, abortion and now same-sex marriage. Once the sexual act could be decoupled from procreation in biology and law, it was only a matter of time until the culture became saturated in a sex is for pleasure mentality. Christians were both blindsided by this initially and then all too happy to accept it. It's, a, it's fitting therefore, some would say ironical or poetic justice, that the issue that is now being warred over by the Catholic Church and the federal government has come down to a fight over contraception. This needs to be a lesson for all of us. If you don't get rid of dissent early, you will have a heresy later. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.